Howdy. <clears throat> I'm Gray Pilgrim. Just reading up on something. This gun. Uh, let, me, let me move this over just a scotch. You should be able to see that. We're looking at a uh, System 1896 Mauser. This was developed by the uh, Federley brothers who were uh, design gunsmiths for Mauser. And Oh gosh, this this thing's showing a now it's showing a wrench. Well, I'm just going to keep going because at least it thinks it's recording. Uh, Paul Mauser had seen uh, uh, Fidel, the eldest, who happened to be a supervisor, working on the thing, and says, "No, don't do that on company time. We're into making rifles." Well, then Borchart came up with his pistol and started selling them like hotcakes, and so Mauser went back over and said. You're now making uh, that pistol, and uh, I'm joining the team. And when it came out, it became known as the Mauser, not the Federally. But the workers on the on the floor in the factories always referred to it as the Federally pistol because it was their design. But this is a beautiful, beautiful piece of, of 19th and early 20th century uh, fabrication. This is a very early one. <clears throat> and I got a... Uh, reproduction stock for the thing. <clears throat> By the way, uh, after the fall of the Chinese uh, dynasty and the beginning of the Republic, uh, you could, well, they, they started a period in, in China known as the War Art period. I've got a book on it up there. And uh, you were not allowed to uh, ship these things or any kind of, of rifle into China uh, under a federal treaty or international treaties. But you can ship pistols. Well, Mauser added these, and the Chinese just loved them. Not only did they buy them up as, as fast as they could, but they started making them themselves. And you can find uh, Chinese versions that are made in everything from 45 ACP to uh, this, which is uh, 762 by 25, to uh, uh, later Tokarev round uh, type ones. But it is a beautiful, beautiful pistol. And, oh, come on now. Ooh, there we go. That's how you uh, cock it. You load it with stripper clips, which I happen to have some of here. Ooh. This is the uh, complete, uh, well, there's the stripper clip that goes in it. I'm not gonna load it. But it comes with that, that's a cleaning rod and uh, the leather uh, frog for the thing, and this uh, holster. Well, yeah, that's what this is, is a holster. And the way it works is, uh, oh, come now. Getting it off can be a bit of a problem. There. Take it out. Take this out. that in. Oh. Put the safety on. Put it in. <clears throat> then uh, shove the whole thing in like this. and then strap it into place. Oh, and uh, hook up your uh, cleaning rod, of course. Then you would put this on your uh, Sam Brown belt and you'd be ready for uh, the stint of the Kaiser's army. Uh, this was used, it was never issued as an actual military weapon because it was never adopted as a military weapon anywhere by a uh, official government military was uh, adopted by many warlords, but uh, it was used uh, as a commercial pistol, uh, well, let's see, from 1896 until when it was introduced until it was discontinued around 1939. But and over a million of them were made. But uh, in spite of the fact that a million were made, they're kind of rare these days because I guess folks just got uh, so so used to getting a a quality pistol 
that uh, Mauser, well, they became uh, victims of their own success, shall we say. They tried to, to hit this sweet spot many, many times after this with other guns. Uh, well, they got the Mauser HSC, and that sort of worked for a while, but uh, this was a much better pistol, I think, though it's bigger, bulkier. But uh, in the uh, uh, what's called the River Campaign, uh, the war against the uh, uh, in, in, down in the Sudan uh, with the, the British against the uh, oh god, what was he called? Uh, the uh, the guy who was running the uh, the uh, fanatics down there, uh, Winston Churchill was there, and he had one of these on his belt, and many a time, this saved his butt. <laughs> uh, he uh, he was cut off from his main troops and uh, had to fight his way out, and he used his uh, Mauser uh, broom handle to do it. He was uh, quite fearless. I mean, if you read, uh, he wrote a book called The River Campaign. Excellent book discusses his uh, experience down on, on the Nile. Uh, he was also in the Boer War. He, the man was an adventurer before he was a politician, long before then. Uh, he was a, a reporter for the, I think, the Times. And uh, he, uh, well, in, down in the Boer War, he was uh, captured by the Boers, escaped, got home, wrote about it, and became a, an instant uh, celebrity because of it. Uh, he uh, traded that for, uh, well, that's how he got into politics. <laughs> but anyway, System Mauser. I, I was uh, reading, I have this, this new book, uh, uh, was it Osprey? The Osprey uh, series on, they, they have a lot of books, but this is on the broom handle. And I also have this old, old book, uh, this is from the 1950s, called System Mauser, Pictorial History of the Model 1886 Self-Loading Pistol. And... Uh, it's, it's just as equally as, as interesting as this one, but, uh, or this one. But uh, one thing I should mention, I think it's, yeah, page 124. So this shows, oh yeah. Ah, that's what I paid for this? Shoot. Uh, <coughs> You, if you stick a stock on a on a pistol, that's called a uh, uh, a short barreled rifle or a uh, it's, it's considered a no no by the ATF, except for this one. In the 1980s, the ATF wrote out a letter basically stating that this was exempt from that rule because it's an antique. And originally, it was you had to have it with the original stock that came with it. Then they uh, lightened that up a little bit and said, and a reproduction would also work. Now, somebody noticed that they were allowing reproduction black powder revolvers, and you know, and they, uh, I think the Colt one, the uh, 1860 and the 1851s, and I, actually the 1863 also uh, could be had with uh, uh, stocks. Anyway, Sister Mauser, excellent pistol. Uh, I've shot this one several times, and it's it's a gas. <laughs> I've got a, a ammo can full of. Uh, of this. By the way, never shoot this with Tokarev. It's interchangeable with Tokarev ammo, but the Tokarev ammo is just a little bit hotter, and it will basically, basically rattle this thing uh, into oblivion if you shot it. You could shoot it if you uh, basically uh, disassemble the round and then load it up uh, a little bit lighter powder charge. Uh, I'm sure that that would work, but uh, I have some original uh, uh, Mauser ammunition for this thing. It's pretty old ammo, but uh, it shoots well, and it's just it's just cool to watch the action, and it's just cool to shoot. You know, just one of my favorite pistols. Happy trails.